is life what happens to us when we're making other plans? Or are we trying to bring the future to the present so we can do something about it now? Well, that's what this section is all about. Preparing for your final piece. Hey everyone, welcome to section two. This is unit one. Today we're actually looking at storyboards. What are they? How are they used? Why do we use them? Now one thing I want to address before we get started. We do have two options. Now, your options for graphic arts in this course is a standalone piece, meaning a painting, uh, some sort of a art piece that will stand alone on its own, but tells a story. I have examples today to show you of that if you're a little confused, but uh, don't worry. Our second option is a sequential piece. Now sequential meaning images, one after another in a certain order that tell a story. You can use words, uh, application of words or text on that is uh, something we'll cover down, down the way, but that's an option too. So sequential and standalone pieces. But storyboards in general are often used for sequential art pieces. Um, images together just tells a story, a book. Uh, you could think also of storyboards being used in gaming, so to design video games or film, um, a lot in children's books, and a ton in comics and graphic novels. Storyboards are essential. It's almost like your blueprint to help you plan. When you actually start working on your final finished piece, uh, your, your polished final uh, project, whatever that is that you're working towards in this course, your storyboard and your story together will help guide you. That's your blueprints, okay? So we're going to get started and we're going to look at storyboards in general and how they apply to both standalone pieces of art and sequential art pieces. Let's get started. Okay everyone, so storyboards, what are they? Why do we use them? Why are they important? With the story, now we're trying to tell a story, something narratively, a narrative story, something that is usually uh, digested through words. We're trying to show that through an image or a series of images. In order to do that, we need to consider what a storyboard is and how it works. Now, typically, a storyboard is rough sketches. So, if I were laying out the storyboard for a sequential piece, I would go ahead, have my story next to me. And I would start drawing out what that image would be inside of each one of my panels. Panels are the boxes that fall inside of graphic novels and comics and so forth. Now, if I was planning uh, a storyboard for, let's say, a children's book, it would work similar, except for when I would sketch out my thumbnail, which is the small image that makes up what this portion of the page is. I would go ahead and sketch the entire page using just very simple lines and shapes to show composition, to show how each element relates to another element in the piece. Composition is the makeup of elements on a page. So if this was two people, let's say, having dinner together, and that was one page of my book, this was what my storyboard would look like. In the storyboard, I'm able to tell a few things. I'm able to see perspective, so at which angle we're looking at these characters from. I'm able to tell composition, as we said, so that means that we have where the placement of items are, such as your cups, such as your um, um, people, even. So all of these things together um, make up the actual storyboard. So. In order to really understand how this works in a more complex way, I want to show you an example of the current storyboard that I have. Now, this is from a graphic novel that I did called uh, Mockingbirds. It was written, or is written by Bruce Parsons. This is a finished page of this story. So when you look at this page here, you can see that it's completely finished. The inks are on there. All the elements are finished, the speech bubbles are prepared. This shows us the entire page. Now before this ever happens or occurs, we start out with this, which is just a blank page. And in this, we see that there are words. And the words tell us what's happening. This is the story. You should have by this time finished your story or idea for your standalone piece. If you have it, then you really need to get 
get started on that. That's important. Now, with this story, what I do is I go ahead and I create thumbnails of what's happening. This is the finished page here that, not the finished page, but the page that I'll finish this on. So after I create the storyboard, I start working on the final piece here. So the elements that I need to do that, though, are my story and then the storyboard. These together help to produce the final piece, what's happening at the very end. Now, for standalone pieces, what I'm meaning by that is, let's say, a painting or a um, just a general piece of art that stands alone on itself. It's not there's not a lot of there's no pages, there's no sequential format to it. There's not multiple drawings. There's not you know pages to it. So we're talking about one one painting or one uh, uh, drawing or however it may be. For those, it works a little different. Okay. And next uh, in the next part of this section and going into the next section, we're going to be talking about things like underpainting, laying color on layers to show uh, value, color theory, composition, reflection, transparency, uh, transfer images, uh, texture, illusion of texture. All these things will be covered. So right now we're just talking about getting our idea from paper to an image. That's it right now. Okay. Now, before I show you an example of storyboarding for a painting or a final piece, I'm actually going to show you a couple of artists uh, whose work that I admire. Remember, I asked you earlier in this course to select artists that you uh, admire. Well, these are a few that I really uh, just love. First, we'll start out with them. Um, this is more graphic design oriented, but um, this will tell you a little bit more about what we're trying to capture in in our um, in our our course here. Uh, uh, this this is a uh, Charlotte Trounce. Uh, she's a she's an artist that has done a lot of uh, work dealing with uh, um, story uh, narrative, but within one final standalone piece. And as you can see, this does tell a story. Um, there's no words, but and there's no pages, and there's no multiple series of images, standalone images, such as inside of a pot panel or something like that. All of these elements are together. Um, you could tell a story from this. You could probably uh, interpret this in different ways, which is always good too. Um, this is a great example here of, of from Craig Fraser. Um, this is a cover of a magazine, but you can see within this graphic that 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 there's something going on. You can you can pull a narrative from this. Um, the person has cut out those clouds that you see out of paper. And then they're standing and admiring them. But if you hadn't seen the scissors and the papers laying around them, you may say this is just someone admiring a, a view. And this is actually uh, Craig Fraser as well. But if you look, there's steps going up the water hose leading from the um, the water uh, spigot, and uh, this really uh, doesn't tell much of of a uh, of a narrative. But it is an interpretive piece. You can a lot from what's happening and why it's happening. That's especially important. Now, if you look close in this image uh, here by Jason Brown, or I'm sorry, Ed Brown, uh, you're going to see a lot happening. This is from Jason and the Argonauts. So, if you look uh, close, there's images within images. So, standalone pieces. This is really uh, a prime example of showing narrative in a standalone piece. There are um, elements all around the main focus of uh, the, the, the lady in the, in the center of the picture. If you look close, there's um, uh, images that are within each of the elements surrounding her that tell a little bit of the story. Now we're moving more into uh, fine art, but um, we're talking about narrative, and I think this is uh, something that, that, that really helps. This is Frederick Remington. This is a very famous painting of his buying polo ponies in the West is the title. But this, this shows narrative. There's men standing looking at a horse. So there, there's, there's one that seems to be a rider and the other two, may, one maybe be the rancher. Um, but you could tell that they're discussing something about this horse. What it is, we could, we could all interpret differently. Um, 
Now we're moving back towards graphic design more. This is uh, uh, Ed Brown as well. Uh, you can see a lot of elements in this. Um, there's things happening that you can interpret. There's a narrative going on. Um, like I said, though, many times standalone pieces do not force a narrative on you. They allow the viewer to interpret from it, which is all art, really. Uh, but uh, that's that's an important thing with standalone pieces. Standalone pieces can be whimsical. They can um, they don't have to give a you know you don't have to put on there um, an exact statement that you just want to force on people to understand. That's uh, that's now that's an option, sure. But you can also do whimsical things that tell stories, shares ideas, concepts, those sorts of things. Storyboards help us to plan for this, though. Storyboarding helps us to design these elements. Now, look at this piece here. This is from Patrick O'Leary. All right, there's a narrative for sure. Um, you have two what we might think of yetis or snow people. I'm not sure, but they're pulling fish out. And you can see that they're sprinkling salt now on an igloo. And we all know what salt does to snow and ice. So perhaps they're changing their diet from fish to people. I don't know exactly what's going to happen here, but there's a narrative. This is uh, Frank Robert Frank Hunter. Um, there's a lot of different shapes going on in coast. You can play around with uh, uh, your your not only your composition but color theory. You can play around with uh, um, reflection and transparency in your painting uh, to give a certain uh, additive to the narrative you're trying to say. Now this is a girl lost, you could say, in a jungle. Now that doesn't look like any jungle I've ever seen in person. The colors don't really match up to what I've seen. Maybe the, leaf, the one leaf there, the greens. But all those other colors this artist has chosen to put in here to add a different um, feeling that you'll get when you look at this. It's strange. It's um, foreign. And uh, maybe dangerous. This comes from uh, Rosie Blake. So you can see that a woman is looking out into this uh, child, maybe a park. I was going to say a children's park, <laughs> but I thought for a second dog park, but um, it, it's a park. And she's standing there looking at what she sees as mothers. They, there's one pregnant with two dogs. There's another holding a child's hand. One has a child on her back pointing at the ducks. Uh, what I get from this is maybe she really wants a child. This is something more detailed. This is from Tomer Ayanka. Um, this is from a series of uh, sequential pieces. Uh, this is, uh, tells a lot. You can see that these folks all dress the same and have weapons, and they're looking at a beast, and they look to be pretty desperate, so I can, you know, my own interpretation is something's about to happen. But you can see there's someone standing by the waterfall, too, so maybe there's something going on we don't understand. So it makes me want to know more about this. Now, this is an interesting piece by John Ber Berkey. A lot of people don't know who John Berkey is, but um, if you know, uh, there's one very iconic image. I'll go back to this for a second. There's one iconic image I'll show in a second from him. I think I included it. But this tells a lot of narrative. Standalone piece of art, but, you know, look, it's war. It's war from the perspective of a fighter pilot. Uh, this is a, I forgot this artist's name, but... Um, this is winter in Japan, and you can see a lot of folks are needing water still. This is, um, I forgot this artist's name too, forgive me. But this person's leaving home, they're waving at their family, a suitcase. All right. This is an iconic uh, piece from Bellows. Um, this is a very famous painting, a series of paintings of, of, of boxing. It, it, the narrative here is, is fighting. You can see the referee trying to break them up. This is, oh, it's Bertha Loom. Loom. Uh, that's the name of this uh, artist that does the Japanese uh, influence work. Here we have a hard rain, but they're trying to keep their lanterns from being uh, watered out. This is uh, another one from, uh, um, I forget his name again, but look at the person on the sidewalk and the people walking by. It uh, gives an element of isolation, of uh, being by yourself, being alone. Being uh, separated from the crowd. George Bellows is the name. That was this is another George Bellows piece. 
family sitting in the living room. They got the pet parrot in the background. The narrative here could be interpreted a lot of different ways. There's a painting in the background. Maybe that's a daughter they lost. Who knows? But this is a um, one from Kong, the train. Berkey piece. And we have some uh, iconic pieces here. Probably no one is best at narrative and standalone pieces than Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell's work has been used in tons and tons of different um, different types of magazines. And because his work is uh, very, very uh, interpretive, you can tell a lot from one of his one of his paintings. This we have a boy who's ran away from home. Look down and see the stick with the bag tied to it. It's all his possessions. He's leaving. But he's talking to a policeman who's probably trying to convince him he needs to go back. This is Sir Lawrence Alma Tremita or Tredima. Um, another fine art piece, but interpretive narrative nonetheless. The hot. So we had the Star Wars cover. This is Berkey. So I told you you may have seen his work. He was uh, hired to do the Star Wars uh, uh, series paintings for the posters. First movies, and uh, I think 1978 was the release of the first Star Wars movie. Maybe 1979, maybe 80, I'm not sure. But this is one of the um, drawings from, or, I'm sorry, the standalone paintings from that. Tell a lot from this. And then, of course, we have um, Degas. This is the uh, dance class. Paintings, maybe at the beginning of this course, you thought, how in the world do we do a painting that tells a story? Well, how in the world can you not tell a story? from something like this. So those are just a few examples of some of the artists uh, that have done standalone pieces that tell a lot. So how do you plan storyboards with a standalone piece? It's a lot different, but it's similar. You're going to have to need planning. I asked you to keep a sketchbook for a reason. In that sketchbook, you jot ideas down. Now let's say I, these ideas were nicely topped up. Of course, this isn't ideas for a specific standalone piece, but just use for example. Pretend these are all my ideas. I have an idea for a standalone piece of art. I would interpret what I was drawing and start to design those elements. The first thing you have to decide is what shape is my art surface, canvas, whatever it is you're going to use. What's the shape of this? Is it a long, is it more tall than it is wide? You know, this has to be decided first. Is it going to be very square? Is it going to be very long? Very thin going up? So let's say I decide to create a piece like this. So I'm interpreting all these elements that I have over here that I've written down. Okay, and then I start to design composition. So a standalone storyboard or a standalone piece works similar to all the storyboard examples I gave you earlier, except you're only doing one. But inside of this one, you have to make it count. So you start to play around with the, the surface. You start to play around with perspective. You start to add things in here that, that, that you want to see in your piece, okay? And you start to design it the way that you would like to see it. You may play around with different things on your composition. That's the goal of this, is for you to try different types of perspectives, uh, try different types of composition. To see how you like how it all comes out and see how you like uh, or how you prefer to see whatever it is you're trying to achieve done visually. You may have to change these things around. You have to move the house way back here in the distance and the person way up close, literally right here against the forefront of the canvas near the viewer and play around with perspective and composition. This is important. This is all important for your final piece. Let's look at a couple more examples today of uh, storyboarding. And it's really hard for me to uh, pull examples offline. I'd rather just show you examples that I've worked on. And I have an example here that I used from Peggy Goodman's book uh, called Family Kentucky Family Reunion. And what happens with this is I start out with her manuscript, the story. That's it. I have to read it. I read her story, and I interpret what she has to say with the illustrations. Now, luckily, this author has provided some guidance for me. What you see in red is suggestions on what she would like to see on that specific illustration. 
I read that and I take that into consideration. Then what I would do is I would go and I do a sketch, a rough sketch of a layout of composition for that page. Now, I will send this to the author or the publisher and they'll look at that and they say, I like this, can you move this, so on and so forth. But planning is key for this. After I figured out the composition for a page, I want to work on the characters. I want to know what they look like. So I'll draw a few out. I'll sketch a few of the characters out the scene. Sometimes the author will, will want to look at things and approve, sometimes not. But once I have all the elements that I think that I need, I go ahead and I sketch a really rough, it's a little more detailed than a pencil, than a, like stick people, but I do a, a drawing of, of the page. So I sketch it out. So I know the composition of the perspective. And once I'm in from there, I'll pencil the final piece. And once I go to the pencil the final piece, I'm able then to start work on the actual watercolor portion. So here's the, the uh, drawing that I just shared with you finished. So all those elements that I needed to work with, I have already figured out before I ever start actually producing the art. I know what's going to happen. Planning is key for everything with this course. So a couple more examples of that. Here's a penciled uh, page. These are actually two pages of a book. So when you look at this, it looks very long. These are actually going to be two pages, what we call a double spread in the industry. So I pencil this out. She may look at it. This is I know the composition. Now before I ever did this, I had a really, really basic, basic drawing where there's just stick thick people. But once uh, the author looks at this, you, you know they approve or they may want to change something. Uh, you go ahead and work on the finished piece. You can see here. Now your goal is to do the same, whether it's a sequential art piece or a standalone piece. Your goal is to plan this much. The course is about planning. Everything in this course is built for you to plan ahead. So one more example. This, this one I don't necessarily have a uh, storyboard to show with it, but this is an example of a, a finished page. I did not sit down and just start drawing this. Every bit of this came from planning. All right, so let's move on and take a consideration of a couple more examples. Uh, this is from the Hillbilly Bigfoot Survival Guide. This is actually one of my stories. So first, as I've asked all of you to do, I've written my story out. There's multiple pages to this story. And after I have all the pages, the entire story written out, or typed out, I start to then to go in and start planning. When I start to work on the planning process of this, it looks a lot similar to what I've shown you earlier. These are storyboard pages. Now notice on this page what's happened. At the bottom, I sketched out in pencil uh, this particular panel from this page, but I didn't like it. So down below here, I redesigned it and uh, made a note to myself to move that up and change that out. Storyboarding is essential for planning, knowing exactly where and what you're going to do on a page. This particular uh, page here, I'll try to show you the finished piece for one of these with some more storyboard examples. But every page has to be designed. It has to be built up from the, from the bottom, and uh, the elements have to be decided, decided upon before you start. But then, after you have all these elements, it's so easy then to go in and work on a finished page. This is a finished page from... The Hillbilly Bigfoot Paranormal Survival Guide. It's a long title. But none of this could ever be achieved without knowing my storyboard and working through a storyboard. Whether it's a standalone piece or a sequential piece. Now this book has many pages to it. I've been working on this book for a while now. So as you can see, there's tons of pages here. So I can show you tons of examples from this. But I guarantee you none of these pages uh, started out with just, um, you know, me drawing on, on a piece of paper. Planning is everything with this, and it's key. If you plan ahead, you can achieve a lot of different things that you, uh, you know, couldn't, couldn't have before. 
So storyboarding is important. We've pretty much uh, finalized and agree, agree upon that. So in this course, you really need to use the element of a storyboard. But there's still a lot of questions, I'm sure, with standalone pieces of art. So for canvas like this one, storyboarding and planning for this may seem overwhelming, but it's not. It's more about preparation. Where are the elements going to go? How are you going to use this particular space that you've chosen to say what you want to say or convey what it is you want others to think about or consider? That's the main goal of this course, thinking about things differently. So we'll move on now to examples of standalone pieces and digital pieces. These are two of the elements within the course that are a little bit kind of left behind sometimes, which I don't want them to be, but the main purpose of getting a story out, it's a lot easier with word balloons or captions or words on a page like a children's book. But trying to do that digitally through a graphic art piece or uh, through a standalone piece like a painting uh, can be a little challenging. So let's take a look at that for a second and see what we can really pull uh, as tools that we can use to create our final piece. So a canvas, you know, we, we, we can choose whatever size we want. Um, canvas is, is can be can be stretched or you can buy prefabricated canvas. It's a pretty thick one. If you were to be able to see on the side of this, it's sort of thick. This is about an inch and a half thick. So you don't really, uh, there's no specifications on what size you need or anything. This is up to you too, just like the planning of your book or your sequential art piece, I should say, or your um, your standalone piece. It's up to you. And let's take a couple um, examples out of out of from what I've done. It's easier for me to show you pieces that I've done than it is to pull up pieces from the internet. So we'll go back to mockingbirds for a second, and let's just take a look first at this. This is a uh, um, example that Bruce Parsons sent me when he said, this is what I think I'd like for the first issue of our book. So my job was to take what he, he sent me, this image, and turn that into an image of art that we could use. So we certainly couldn't use this picture. We didn't take it. It doesn't belong to us. There would be a copyright infringement, and that's not good. But what I can do is do an artistic representation of this particular picture and we're fine. Alright, so the first step in this, of course, is to start sketching out what it is I want to create. So I sketched out this and um, I sent it to Bruce and he said, I like that. Um, and from here, though, we need to then put that on canvas. Now, this is a narrative piece. doesn't work as much. This is a picture of a, uh, of a chicken, right? Uh, of a rooster. Now, this doesn't tell a lot in terms of story, but what I'm talking about is planning first. A lot of people might have stopped right here with this. So I'm done. This looks great. I don't, I don't personally think it does, but I'm just speaking hypothetically. person might stop here. Why go ahead and create something else when I've spent a lot of time working on this one? Well, it's planning. These are a lot of times called dummies or studies. A study in art is when an artist will create something that will, that they want the final piece to look like, and they'll put a lot of work into it. They'll put so much work into it that some artists might say, okay, that's good, leave it there. But they only do that so that they can see what the elements are and how they relate. So I knew I wanted a type of, an entirely black background, and I wanted to uh, change the look of the rooster more, to make it more light. I wanted the colors to kind of blend into one another. So this was what ended up being the final piece here. I put this red line going up the center to kind of show an element of uh, danger, of, um, of an element of uh, mystery. So that was my idea. So what happened at the end is that this final image was incorporated into this and we had our book cover. So planning is key. Standalone pieces of art doesn't matter if it's sequential art, planning a comic strip, planning a um, comic book or a graphic novel or a standalone piece of art. Planning is key. If you don't plan, then the end result is going to be something that you would think of as a first step in the process. So what I mean by that is your end result that you'd submit really is your first draft, if you will, of creating that final piece. Don't stop at that. Keep on. If you have to do paint the same painting over again to get what you want, I say do it. I say go ahead. 
Now let's look at a couple of examples of artists who work within graphic design. And graphic design, we're talking um, uh, sometimes digitally here too. Graphic design can be a lot of different things. So this is an artist. His name is Christoph Niemann. Christoph Niemann is German. He's a, this amazing German artist. His work is just, just I, it's unbelievable. But what he's able to do within an image is is truly remarkable. The stories that he can say, what he wants to convey, even though if it, if the narrative doesn't have to be a, um, a massive um, storyline. It can be just a thought or convey a message. It's up to the artist. Now, Christopher Neiman does this amazing work where he, he will go and he'll take um, common items that we see. His, his Instagram is very popular for this. He'll, he'll bring in elements such as this is a, a credit card. And as you see here, there's a black line going up from the tree. The black line goes up the tree and into the card. So he's used this card, this credit card, to continue that black line. And then beside of it, he has drawn a, um, a woodsman. A, and he's a, uh, a um, guy who's out lumberjack and he's cutting a tree down. And he bends that line just a little bit, that solid shape that goes up the back of a credit card to form that uh, continuation of that line. This is a little... Uh, this is a little interesting. This is two bananas that he's positioned. So look at the perspective. He's put the bananas together, and he's drawn at the end of that the body of a horse. So it looks like a horse running. Um, more examples of this is, of course, this is what we started out with. And uh, if you look real close with this piece, you're going to see that at the bottom, that's an actual landscape. That's um, you know, cranes and people working. What he's actually done with this is this is a glass window overlooking um, this landscape. And he took a dry erase marker and he did all the elements that you see. He's drawn those his, uh, cranes extending and the lines connecting. So the line from the hand of the person down to the crane does not exist. This is a small, thin line that Christoph has uh, put on there. More examples of his work is this. This is a, this is a graphic art piece. This is actually used for a cover of the New Yorker magazine. So what we interpret from this is the thumb is sticking up to form a grave. But underneath, it's an okay sign. Hey, everything's okay, right? So there's two different emotions going on here, two different elements. He does this very well. This is a bagel. And this looks like maybe poppy seeds on a bagel. And uh, he's used this to form someone maybe shaving with that little crease being the... Uh, mouth. Here's a, a spoon with an egg that it is actually uh, drawn to represent a soccer player kicking the ball. Here's a bottle of ink. Looking down at a bottle of ink and then what Christoph has done is used that color of ink to draw the picture of a man taking a photograph. If you look really close. This is looking down at a book. Of course you have the book marker. He's drawn a cat image around that bottom. So those interested in maybe taking images together and photographing them, and we could blow those up and print those at KVEC really easy, at any size. Uh, you may be considering doing this, but planning is important. So I'm, I, Christoph probably drew this book out and the image he wanted underneath it before he started. You can look really close at this one. This is a brush. This is literally a paintbrush that he's pushed down on the paper to represent a dress. And then around that, he's drawn a um, woman, woman's figure, her hands and arms and legs, feet. It's one of my favorite ones. This is a, obviously a pair of socks, and he's turned that into a running T-Rex. Here's a pair of scissors. He stops adding a piece of paper in there to cover the other portion of the scissors, but it represents a um, pair of legs now. So you could do anything with, uh, with images to convey things, and, and that's what makes art so fun and amazing. Um, I brought something that might help to understand graphic art. This is a uh, planning of a logo for a band that I'm doing. 
I hope, I hope you can hear that and all the paper crackling. It's the logo for a band. Now, they sent me some direction. The first thing that they sent me was this image of some mountains. This is not my drawing. This is a drawing that was sent to me. And stars. Then what I don't have with me is the second image they sent, which incorporated trees and roots. And they said they wanted something similar to that. So let me peel this off and I'll show you what we came up with first. So this is the uh, one of the final versions. Now look, at some, notice the red. That's my marking uh, on top of the final drawing. So I went and uh, uh, made marks on top of that to see corrections that I'd like to see. But this is just a rough sketch that, 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 that the logo started out as. And then from here, I went ahead and redrew it again. As I said, planning is everything. And incorporated those pieces together once again, but this time with the changes that I've made. This could be a t-shirt for the band. And this is still not the final what the final bit of drawing or graphic design that I marked out things, I made notes. So now I'm going to take this and do a computer rendering. So the trees will all match up. There'll be a more of a consistent uh, curve, things like that. The lettering will be much more professional. But this is just a storyboard, if you will, a mock-up of what it is that I'm trying to do. Okay? So those of you that are working in this course, planning is key. Mock-up storyboarding is so important. We're going to take a look a little bit here at some uh, digital planning. So let's say you were wanting to work digitally. Okay? Some of you are. And that's perfectly fine to work digitally. Um, if you are going to work digitally, then I think it's probably a good idea for you to choose a software that you're already familiar with. Um, you know, using something that you're not familiar with, you're going to have to first learn how to use that, which is going to be a little difficult. And then on top of that, you're going to uh, um, have to then learn how to how to incorporate these things we talk about. So, so here um, I have a uh, a blank a canvas, right? It's a blank canvas. And what I want to do is I want to see um, what it is that I'm working with here. Pull these things out. Now, planning, whenever you work with a blank canvas, is um, a little different than, uh, let's say, you're working with um, um, paper. Okay? Um, you want to have layers, and then underneath those layers, you actually start to work with your composition. You actually start to draw out the elements that will go into your final piece. So you may have elements that uh, that you like and you don't like digitally, but the best thing about working digitally is you have layers. You have these layers that you can um, use um, to you know start to, to build upon. When you look at these layers, when you start to play around with these layers, you notice that you can have different um, elements happening, and you can turn those elements off and on, uh, which makes it really handy for uh, creating your art. But if I go ahead and add a new layer, and I, I move that layer down so I can start to work with it, what might start to happen is, My design can start to flush itself out more, but you can play around with it more. So here, let me give you an example. Let's say we have a space, an astronaut, okay? And I'm working here. This is not a vector drawing, but a vector drawing would have uh, different points, and inside of those points you have to work, and the vector actually is more of a solid shape than it is uh, anything else. So. So let's say I put my astronaut here, and the astronaut is going to be in the forefront of my drawing. I'm going to try it out and see if it works. And let's say the astronaut is going to be collecting a sample using this machine. Okay? In the background, it's a very isolated, very What's going on in the background? There's nothing there. So I want to make sure I include that in here, my background. And in the distance and the horizon, 
introduce some planets and some stars. This is my first idea, my first design, if you will. And then I can turn that layer off, and I can choose another layer. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the astronaut in the background. Back here, way back here is the astronaut this time. And we're still collecting a sample of the story here. Maybe the sample could be that we're pulling the, um, some sort of rocks or something from the, uh, from the ground. Okay? So I'm drawing a little stick figure of my astronaut pulling this uh, sample from the ground. So here's the machine they're using. It's a dark machine. It's got wheels. Um, Add that in there. So, just a small little rendering, a small sketch. And in the background, of course, I'm going to put way out here in the background, I'm going to put the curvature of the planet. There's not some little bit of structures, but not much. Put some rocks. Right here, closer this time to me, I'm going to put a series of rocks. And behind those rocks, I could put alien. This is all if if what you're wanting to say calls for it, of course. So here's my alien, right? Watching him. And let's go ahead now. We'll go back to this one. And instead, we're going to put some rocks in the background here. We're going to erase a little bit. There we go. And we're going to put some rocks in the background here. We'll draw the alien watching him from a distance. There's our alien. I know it looks, doesn't look much like an alien. Uh, but, but like I said before, this is just a, uh, this is just a mock-up storyboard. So it doesn't have to be super detailed. Okay. So now, after I have these two layers drawn or sketched out, I can play around and see which one I like best. I can put the astronaut front forward, or I can put the astronaut in the rear. I can even turn both of them on, and I can tell my composition this way. Now, this is one advantage of working digitally. You have so many different elements you can play with. You can even, if you wanted, start manipulating the picture to get a certain perspective. You can move the astronaut down more. Right here, so you're working a little closer to us this time than before, and then we can include our alien here watching him. But we're going to get rid of all this other stuff in the background, including the other alien in this picture. And we can play around to see well, what if I wanted this composition now? where the astronaut is a little closer to the alien working. Still has his machine. Still have our horizon here. And we get rid of the other horizon. What's left of it anyway. Right here. And now we have a completely new composition for our drawing. So working digitally, a lot of advantages to it. Some people love it, some people don't. But it's up to you, really, on what you prefer. What I suggest doing is if you don't have access to a tablet or, let's say, you have, don't have means to uh, work digitally, um, some schools offer devices to students to use or sign out. You can try that. Um, or you can um, even go as far as to look for free apps and programs that are available on smartphones and try to do that with uh, your phone. It would be a little, little challenging, but it's something that could, could be done. So that's it. We have our storyboard, our idea of our storyboard, pretty much laid out for us now. And I hope that this has made some sense, and I hope that you are really excited about taking your story and now start to plan your story or your idea for your final piece into what your composition is going to be, your perspective, your elements, your shape, your 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 space. All of these things matter so much. Um, 
So I really appreciate your uh, taking the time to take this course. I hope you've had uh, fun so far. I hope that you're keeping up to par with where you need to be in terms of all the things that we're asking. Be sure and check out the assignment for this course. Uh, it's really simple. I just like to see. I'd like to see an image of uh, your storyboard. So I'll take a picture of it and upload it uh, to the to the course site so we can see uh, that you've uh, begin work. On, on designing whatever it is that you're working on. I'd like to see just an image of that, okay? So thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you in Unit 2 of Section 2.